Hello, good morning and welcome back to Maple Farms. It is now early December. It has been a while since uh, we last logged some of this farm. Um, mainly for me, not for you guys. I had some updates. This is now precision farm and ready. And in doing my updates, that uh, Cavalier Roy was kind enough to send me the map early. I made a few mistakes in updating my files. I lost all my fences again. I put my fences back. I had to cut down the trees that I'd cut already. This is my new fence. It's a little bit nicer and tidier than the last one. I'm going to have a little recap of what's been going on. I cut down those trees, if you guys remember last time, and we sold them. Well, I cut them down again because they respawned. And I'd done a few other things and went about to go and sell them. And it turned out that in when I updated my files, I lost all the uh, placeable productions. So they were all gone from the map. So I started to go around putting them back on. Uh, manually, watching my own tour. We've now got wooden fence here as well. This was a mesh fence, but I thought this is this is done a bit nicer. Because I managed to remove the old gates. In losing my fences the second time, I actually lost my gates. So now I have my own placed gates and it's all a lot better. Anyway, so yeah, I, I went around and I placed all the uh, all the cell points back until I got to the BGA. I arrived at the BGA and it was still there, but without the triggers, which was uh, confusing. I spent a bit of time trying to work the... Uh, <laughs> placeables in, hiding bits and doing it so I could have the trigger still there if I want to use it. It just wasn't working. It was terrible. Um, so then I came out and I changed the save and I was going to get ready to restart completely anew and uh, do some bits and try and catch up again. And then I thought to myself, why don't I just move the placeable folder from the new save into the old save? and hopefully they'll reappear. So I did that. And in doing that, all my placeables were up, returned, but my fences disappeared again because I'd messed up from the old save. So they were gone still. But these bloody trees come back again, and I think it was by then about the fourth time of cutting them down. So they were sold, and I've kept the money for that. Now, I did do an episode where I mentioned all this before and I sold the, the, the wood and we've kept the money that's why we're now at 103,000 rather than I think it was 96 grand and in that episode we cleared the we rolled the hay off that field we got this Ted and rolled this up and then we bailed both of these fields and that was good <laughs> That went really well. It was a nice episode. And then when I came out of the game and I went to go and look for the video, turns out I didn't hit start record. I hit start stream. So for about two hours, I was babbling away on Twitch without any settings set up. It's an awful stream. And uh, because I put in the uh, simulator radio when I'm doing time-lapse bits, the bits I know that are going to be time-lapse, I put on the simulate radio in the game and I listen to some, you know, real music because I know it's going to be alright because I cut that out, I mute it and then we just watch the time-lapse with some um, copyright-free music uh, put over it. This field is uh, Ted and Road. This is going to be bailed today. But because it was Twitch, Twitch didn't like that I put... <laughs> about an hour's worth of copyright music on and today <laughs> I got an email telling me I got my first strike on Twitch for <laughs> playing all that copyright music. I don't even stream on Twitch, I sometimes use it for my console. I have been trying to play around with it, doing on the PC and getting the settings right. That's why it was set to stream, stream to Twitch and not to YouTube. But at least it went there and I didn't get enough strikes for trying to do stuff on YouTube. So we lost that episode. I think it's there in the uh, video on demand for my Twitch channel. I don't know how long they stay there. So if you want to see what I did, 90% uh, muted because obviously Twitch <laughs> mutes all the music. 
and me for a large part of it. It's there. You'll see that we did the work. But what I got was of those two fields, 30 bales, which I've stacked in here. We got to. I, I think I did the baling, um, but I, I was going to. I did the stacking off screen anyway. I was going to do that because you don't. I didn't want you guys to have to sit through that. But I've got them on there. They're not too bad. They're not perfectly lined up, but I think that's that's pretty decent stack. We already had some in there, and uh, we've got some bales left over, which I was going to sell, and they're on the back of the John Deere. So we're going to jump in the John Deere, and we're going to get these sold start of our day. Now we're starting a little bit later than I would have liked, uh, just because we want some daylight for the jobs we're going to do. And also, you know, I want to give you a little catch up on what I've been doing. Uh, it's been a while for me, like I say, not, not like a, a massive amount of time, but, you know, long enough. So yeah, that was, that was, that was a fun few days trying to sort that out. It was nothing to do with the map. It was all me, all how I was <laughs> moving files. I'm not very good at that sort of stuff. But now I think I've learned a little bit through my mistakes. And uh, as I said in the last episode, if it was Oot Baylor on, I probably would have gone, you know what? Screw it. We're not good there anymore. That's too much of a hassle. But because it's Maypole and I absolutely love this map, I, I was, I was willing to restart again and catch up. I've already done that once. As you can see, we've got our walls back. All the fields, all the f AI owned farms, as it were, all have their walls and fences back. The map is much prettier because of it. It looks so much nicer, so much more authentic. So uh, we're going to enjoy this. Now, what we need to do today is get that um, cow pasture bailed up and probably store some of them bales, depending on how many you get. We might store some, we might sell them all. I've got me indicators working now as well. We lost those a few episodes back, I think. Um, so we want to get that done. And then we're going to look into getting our soil sampled, because like I say, we are precision farming ready. By the time this episode comes out, everyone might be precision farming ready for the update um, from the mod hub. But I was lucky enough, Cavalier Roy sent me uh, Maypole Farms and Riverview, which uh, is the map I used to do my uh, precision farm and guides, bumble through, look at sort of uh, playlist. So that was very kind of him. But yeah, hopefully everyone's enjoying precision farming, getting to grips with it. There's a lot, a lot of, I say a lot of things, there's a few things that are different. And some things I'm still still got to do some tests with to get my head round. This is where we want. Now also, we might find for a few episodes here and the next few episodes on uh, Ube Laron, I stumble through the controls a bit because I have done some remapping on my uh, side panel just because I think it'll work a bit better once I get used to the new layout that I've given it. So, let's take our straps off. They should all sell nicely. 16 grand, look at that. That's that's good money for us. That's really good. So yeah, we might find that I fold some things and lift some things and what have you. Um, but because I want to be doing it, so we're turning on multiple equipment at the same time, especially when we on on Ube Laron, We've got front and rear mowers and I have to keep flipping to turn them on and off individually and raising them individually. And on here we'll eventually get a better mower set up and uh, we'll be wanting to do everything all at once. So yeah, I've just done some remap and made it more comfortable to where I think it'll work better for me once I get used to it. So with that long <laughs> intro and explanation out of the way, let's go and find where I left the baler. And uh, we'll go bail up that field. I think I put a background here where I keep putting it. Yeah, I did. Also try to move a few of the controls onto the mouse just to try and make certain things a little bit more comfortable. So we can uh, do stuff like this a bit easier. 
hopefully. So we have that little pair over the top because I do like that function, but I don't use it very often because it's somewhere awkward, but now it's a little bit better. So let's jump out of cab. If I can see what we're doing. Now it looks like we've got a pretty thick swath on here. So we'll just get stuck straight into this. Now I did cut all the baling out. But not the baling out, all the bale loading out last time. Or oh, not last time. <laughs> we didn't get to see it, did we? I have to remember that. So uh, I'll probably keep in what I'm moving and doing, depending on how many bales we've got today. I might keep that in. So stick some lights on. And I have to remember, this one's turning on every time. It doesn't seem to keep that as a, a saved setting. Unfortunately. I think it should be if I've if I want that left turned on automatically all the time so it unloads. But yeah, another thing that we had to do, um, because I had to reset the placeables, and that means the uh, animal pens as well. But the uh, both cow pastures, both cow barns were completely empty of feed when I came back in, so I had to uh, get those filled up as well, which was um, a little bit time consuming to say the least. And I wasn't sure the exact amounts that were in them, uh, but I haven't filled them up completely. Uh, the robot feeders aren't 100% uh, full, and neither of the feeding troughs um, are 100% full. I mean, they were really full as well before, but they're not as full now, so we have lost a little bit of feed through that. Again, I know that's a file that I probably could have gone and found and moved, but I'd, uh, <laughs> I'd had enough of messing files up, so I thought we'd just do that myself, and I uh, wouldn't cheat myself in more than we already had. I've undersold myself. As I, uh, as I often seem to do, I do punish myself when I mess up. Now, if you're watching this, Roy, I probably should have uh, <laughs> messaged you, but it's only just now struck me again. This patch here, I wasn't able to row myself. My worker wouldn't row it. And my baler doesn't register that there's any cut material here. And this was done before the update, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But that's the only patch on the map that I've come across that's like that. So if that does eventually become uh, rowable and pick up a ball, I'm going to have some nice thick rows there. If not, we'll just have that nice under texture, which again is alright, it's not a problem. But me being me, I spent quite a bit of time trying to get that. Different angles, different machinery. So I think what I'll do now is I'll uh, crack on with this so we can squeeze in as much of the other jobs as I want to get done today into the video. And uh, we'll stick a little bit of music on. And uh, hopefully I won't get no strikes this time.
So I've just got these last two rows to do. And uh, that'll be another field bailed. Now I have installed the uh, bail counter mod. Which comes up under the help menu. So I think that's telling me I've got 10 bales off this field, which is a lot. we got 30 off the others. So if we've got 10 already, we're probably going to get another 2. 12 bales off here, that's really good. Now at first I didn't think the, uh, the bale counter mod was working properly. Because I wasn't expecting to find it in the help bar. Um, it, in the description it probably says that. But I was hoping it was going to pop up. But, you know, just above the uh, the bale fill. I need to try and remember where the reset for that is because I wouldn't want that constantly counting every bale. Just the ones we're doing for that, probably for that harvest or that year. The yearly bale count would be pretty good. Obviously, if you were uh, on uh, console or you don't want another mod on, you can go into the game options if I show you. So not everyone knows where these things are. And uh, if we go to statistics, which clearly I don't know where that is. Uh, bales produced, there you go. So in total in the game, I've produced 73 bales. Today we've produced 12. So that's pretty good. No collectibles yet though. I could have treated myself with all that hassle. It would have been easy to go on, you know what? Fuck it, we're gonna, we're gonna have a collectible. Now I said I'd remapped some controls, but I, I instinctively went to the old mapping and the, it still worked the same, so whether they've come over with me, because I did it from the main menu rather than this in-game saves controls, but some of them have, like the uh, the in-cab look and stuff like that, That was that's all come over, so... We'll see. We'll see as, <laughs> as the series progresses. I don't think there's enough just laying around. It's a shame I can't get anything off here. Because that would do this bail for me. just cannot get it to come off. I think that is it. That is us done. We can turn our light off as well now. Again, it's a shame we can't just unload that. Because it's a pretty big bail. It's a shame you can't unload that. Unless we can and uh, I'm just getting it wrong. I don't think we can. Nothing where I would normally unload a bale. So, or unload anything. So we'll park this up. And uh, no doubt it'll be hay going in there again next time. Now in resetting our placeables as well, we did lose what little silage we had and what little milk had been produced, but we had used pretty much all our uh, silage, our slurry. We did lose that, but we had used most of that up. But the manure stayed in and our silage stayed in. So we've still got all that silage to use and, you know, to potentially sell if we wish. Let's try and back this in here. There we are. Just have to stop talking just for a second to get my brain in gear and then we can go. Lovely job. So again, we have a little look round, have a little peer over, is that alright? Yeah, that's all wonderful, lovely job. See? I like that sort of thing anyway. So I think what we're going to do is we'll stick six of our new bales in here and then We'll put another, because there's 12, and then we'll put the other 12 on the trailer, and we'll sell them as well. Because that got us some good money. So hopefully this won't be a complete balls up. Sometimes I do this really well. Sometimes it's an utter, utter mess. I was going to say something else, but we'll, uh, we'll try and keep it clean. Now, I've also trying to get two on here since the spikes struggle to uh, pierce it all the time in, in doing 30 bales I managed to have a little bit of a practice in with this now as long as I don't lift them too high you don't tip 
is alright until it comes to the high stack. But what we really need to work towards, I think, we've got the wheel loader. I would like a telehandler as well, though. Uh, or I would just like to replace it, I think, with a telehandler. But our wheel loader, if we sold it, it really isn't worth a lot. So. I get close enough. the stack. Might have to come back a little bit. I'm coming you off. There we are. Nicely done. Now the rest of them aren't going to be so easy. There's a couple of singles. Right, let's go get him. last six on here. Hopefully nice and smooth. Now I haven't strapped that middle one down. I'm hoping I won't knock it off as soon as I uh, start talking. Back up a little bit. Lovely job. We'll just, I will strap it now though. Because we know I'm a bit of a disaster with things like that. And I've only got one more to get on, although I might try and risk getting that little square bale on, or at least moving it. I might just <laughs> chuck it in the feed or something. That can go somewhere. It needs to go somewhere, doesn't it? Keep sitting out there for another year. That'll definitely be rotten. This has taken up a lot more of the day than I had hopes, but that's just because <laughs> slow and steady <laughs> makes less mistakes. It's uh, kind of that simple, really. There, strapped on nicely. Look at that. Almost like I've done it before. So I'll just grab this, uh, this old one off here. Oh, camera. Get it? We got it. Just. Now this is one of the ones we made with the uh, the little uh, Massey Ferguson baler and the Arcusen stacker. Nice little combination. But it was very time consuming. And as you can see, my, uh, my bale stacking takes quite a while as it is. Let alone putting in the extra steps. I think we'll probably just stick it in the robot bit. I think there's enough in there. Oh, that's all gone. Wow. Okay. I just had to check them. I filled that. What's my, uh, what are my numbers then? Got hey, 33,000 litres. We've still got quite a bit in here. I think I've put... I think what I've done is I've put 
more straw in than hay, whereas before we had more hay than straw. But at least we've got plenty, uh, plenty stored up. And we've got a lot less silage in there than we did have, but we have got a lot, a lot, a lot of silage in the clamp. So that's not really an issue. Didn't realise I'd left it that shy. Dilemma. Never mind. We'll stack it at some point. I won't do it all right now because we've just moved bales and the cows are still over the other side. I want to get this fertilised uh, before we uh, move the cows back in. Now, something I have noticed, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, people, as I'm sure you've all uh, probably been playing with your precision farming a lot more than I have. When we roll our grass now, even on a sampled soil, roll the grass, um, I didn't get a fertilised state with a grass roller. I didn't get any sort of fertilisation. Now, is that a thing? Have we lost that with precision farming? Do we not, like, get, I don't know, 10, 20 percent from rolling the grass in? That would be nice. Or is it just because when I did it uh, on my console save the other day, um, I wasn't scanning it, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I, see, we, I, I in doing so, didn't get a fertilised state from grass rolling with a grass roller. But I'm sure we'll find out more f as we go along with the series and understand more of precision farming in 22. So let's take our straps off. We'll get these sold. That's just that's just under 10 grand again. So I think that's about 26 grand we've made off our bales today, which is really nice. So on my way back, I am going to arrange for someone to soil sample our fields I'm going to take a detour at the shop because there's something I want to try and pick up and we'll head back to the farm so at the store while our soil samples are being done um, we're going to pick up a Asari Pro Compact now these fit on to our wing mirrors and they will give us a real time uh, need for the nitrogen of our crops as we're working over the field. It says the Asari Pro Compact detects real nitrogen demands of your crops. While driving with the sensor over your field, you'll get more precise information of the nitrogen that is required. With this information, the fertilization will be more accurate and it results in a higher yield. Now, these sensors don't work at night, so we've got to get this done during daylight hours and through the winter. We have a little bit less of that, so I probably need to do less jibber jabber and more getting on with it. So fit it to our dirty John Deere, that's what they look like. We really do need to uh, invest in some sort of jet wash or washing station. Yeah, hopefully they're going to help keep costs down. Right, everything's reattached. Start the engine up, that'll help, won't it? Now, I was thinking about getting a manure spreader. But I honestly don't think we've got enough manure, even with precision farming, enough manure to warrant leasing a manure spreader just to do the one field. We did it with the slurry tanker, but I knew that we had enough slurry to do that. Um, I want to do put the manure on our crop field, which is later in the year. Hopefully, in three or four months' time, when we do that, we will have uh, a fair bit more manure. Now, another thing with regards to resetting my placeables, I lost all my cows. So, I had to repurchase those. And, obviously, we had 10 of them that were ready to give birth this year. And, obviously, we've lost those births. Hard, hard times, I know. Uh, I think we had uh, 16 of the black and white cows and 16 or. Holsteins, sorry. 16 Holsteins and 16 Swiss Browns. I think we now have 18 of each to make up for... Mind out of the way, dog. So, are you up? <laughs> Did you see him go flying? Um, yeah, we now have, uh, I think, 18 of each, maybe 20 of each to make up for those lost births. 
and the Swiss Browns that we originally brought as the smallest calf are now a year old calf because they had been there about a year so uh, I, I, well, I wasn't going to lose out on that as well as anything else that we've lost out on so the cows are as fresh so uh, we have to wait next year to get some more of our own real calves which is a shame but we have got a few, a few not a lot a few bonus cows as we would have had a quite a bit of a bigger herd coming into the spring now we're not going to it's a shame but again a bit of a penalty on myself for being <laughs> shit at update and stuff I guess right so now that we've got this on here let's take a look and see if our um, soil samples are finished. So as you can see, fields 68, 60, 67, 84, which is now combined, 85, 86, and 90, we've got the samples of. Um, we've got a pretty decent mix of soils there, I think. Now I believe we've got a custom soil map. I want to say that. I think we have. So our pH, which is our lime, isn't very good. I thought that would have been better because I dug all that up and I've limed that. So I guess our soil states have completely reset, along with our nitrogen. Oh, slow, oh we've cut that since we slurried. I was say we slurried that, but we've cut that since. So, uh, yeah. I don't know if we're going to get a reset or uh, a replenishment of nitrogen when we cut our grass because, obviously, we cut it before precision farming came in. That's why we've not got a predict or a showing of our yield. So we've got a hell of a lot of work to do. Now we should have. Should. Our solid fertiliser over here. Now I did say in my last episode. That I might spend a bit of time over winter. Uh, with our money. Filling up our uh, uh, storage silos, our bins that we have around the farm. I think it would make sense to use them. I think it would be a bit more realistic maybe than having everything stored on the floor like it is. We shall see about that, I guess. This is a... It's taken a lot. I've got a lot of part-used bags there, I think. Lovely job. Right. So first one I want to do is uh, the cows around here. Now nothing's really going to grow over winter, but it'll be fertilised. Let's get a little out of cab. Now I think it was. I'm just going to check rather than guess. Alt B to uh, turn on the sensor. There we go. And we still get to keep the. Uh, application reading there. And I do believe we have quite a wide width on this. Oh, look at that. He's dead. It's going to eat up the fertilizer like crazy. Right. But it shouldn't be wasteful. So even though we've got that wide flick, it shouldn't be too wasteful. Although that is going down pretty quick because the soil is just completely drained. I say our tractor is getting a real time reading. I know it doesn't matter so much with this first one, but for future fertilizations, it will make a difference. So it's good to uh, be in good practice of turning that on and making sure you're using as much as you need to use. Now, none of these should take very long. It's going to pan out so we can get a nice wide view of that. Get to see a little bit more of the beautiful map as well. I think the farm looks nice like that as well. Look at that, through the trees. It's actually a nice shot of the farm. I haven't looked at it like that before, I don't think. It's, uh, it's really quite nice. If I wasn't busy, I'd grab a screenshot, but both hands are in use. <laughs> I 
Now again, I don't think I'm going to need to uh, narrow that down. Probably should, but hey, we're risky around here. It does look like the number is reducing as it drops, so I think we're good. See, now we fertilised that ground that I couldn't pick the grass up from. That is a strange one. So let's go and fill up again, and we'll head out uh, to one of our meadows and uh, get that done. Oh yeah, the junk is back as well. I've kept that just to make it a challenge for a little bit to keep weaving through. Since I was going through there at a bit of speed and losing bales and things at times, I thought, you know what, let's slow ourselves down and uh, leave the junk. I think there's even a couple of bits of wood down there as well. So next up we shall uh, go with this field, this meadow. I'll try to remember to call the meadows meadows and not fields. I guess there is a, a technical difference. Lovely widespread, getting that done. Takes no time at all, he says, as he poodles around at 10 miles an hour. I do have the, uh, you might have seen it as I brought the option up, I do have the uh, toggle speed limit thing. Now, if we, I just got to slow down, that should be alright. It'll tell us that an actual recommended working speed is 18 miles an hour rather than the 10 that we work at. So you never know. Sometimes we might work a bit quicker. I don't know if that'll uh, speed up or slow down the... Uh, or keep it the same, the release of the fertiliser. Might be something I play around with uh, off-screen on a different save. Let's get rid of that. But it is... Uh, assuming the fertiliser... We've only got half a bag left. So I think we'll probably only get this meadow done with the fertiliser that we've got. And uh, I'm not sure. I might go back to the store and get some more for today. Or I might save some fertilising for later on another day. The grass isn't going to grow because it's winter. So that's not really uh, an issue for us. Now I did try and map some of these functions. So I wonder if... I put the uh, change work and width on here. No, just turn on and off. <laughs> I'll have to check that as well off screen. I don't want to keep making mistakes with that. I might have enough. That did pretty good. I think, yeah, if we f we'll, we'll put the rest of that bag in there and we'll try and get that meadow done. Um, we can then try, not try, we will move our, she our cows across because they need putting back and I expected the grass to die off in December so whether it's late December the grass is going to die I expected that all to be sure we managed to fill to 88% uh, so hopefully that's enough I think it will be I'm never confident with my uh, estimations and my uh, hopes <laughs> of things being enough or filling up or going as far. I think I'm always really short or really over the <laughs> over presumptuous when it comes to quantities in FS. We're always shy on the yield and <laughs> our stores never go as far as I'd like them to. Again, this shouldn't take very long. The the width on this is absolutely amazing. I think it's like 40 odd meters. Which is crazy. That's only, you know, a reasonably small fertilizer. Must have a hell of a flick. The rotation on them discs must be uh, quite something. You don't want to get your finger in there, that's for certain.
I guess if we don't get a complete coverage, it's not the end of the world. We have got lots of meadow. And uh, when I get round to doing the, uh, the other two, we can uh, soon hit the spot that was missed here if the grass hasn't completely grown. Which it shouldn't do. If they all die off in winter, they all sh should all grow back at the same time. Now let's just check that that shuts off. It does. I do like the auto shut off. That does help for someone like me that is often so wasteful with his fertiliser. And especially my herbicide. Uh, but now, we shouldn't need to do the preemptive spraying. Although, we can only do the spot spraying, I think, with the John Deere sprayer. Nothing else has the uh, um, spot and spray, or see and spray function. I think it is that, only that John Deere sprayer. Which is a shame. Hopefully we'll see more uh, arrive through the mod, the modern community. That would be nice. Now that that's done, you can see uh, 66, 67 and 90 are perfect for our grass. This is the one I want to get the manure on, primarily. I want to get a layer of manure on this, then seed it with, I think it was our oats we were going to put in here. Seed it with oats and then we can fertilize spread it. And then these ones we will probably do in the spring, uh, just before the grass starts to grow back. So that'll probably be around the same time as we get this one done, I should imagine. Got a little bit that I missed on the turn and angles, but that's absolutely fine. I'm happy with that. So the last job of the day is going to be getting the cows back across into their main field. So if we have a look, if I do that, we can see... Does it tell me how many I have? About 38 in total. That's split between the two, so... However that works out is how many we've got. But we'll, uh, we'll start by moving the Holstein over. So it may mean we've got 20 Holstein and 18 uh, Brown Swiss. I think that's what it is. Be mindful of the trash. We've still got plenty of manure in this one. Uh, manure, we've got a little bit of manure in the other. I'll check and see what we do have manure wise once we've finished unloading. So that's the final six cows in the back of the trailer. That is that meadow emptied. Now, if you're new to the channel, new to the series, and you're wondering why am I doing this, uh, it's because we've got a spare meadow. It's that simple. Uh, obviously, you don't need to remove your cows to cut the grass. But I figured we have a spare meadow. Why not use it to add a little bit of realism and we get our cows out while we cut? Now, at some point, I would like to grow to the point that we use both of them. But when we get that big, I mean, I did say we'd just cut through them with the cows in. But I'm thinking um, I could place a... Sorry, if I let me tractor. I could place a, another um, like open meadow in a grass field. As long as it's enclosed, we could put the cows in there. Or we could lease a meadow at another farm and uh, do it that way. Because I quite like this uh, movement of the cows. You guys let me know what you think about that. Uh, do you think it's silly? Am I wasting my time? Is it just... I don't know. I like it. <laughs> I think it's quite fun. Like I say, it's a little bit of realism. Which... Although this is a simulator, it isn't always easy to get. What would be really nice if we, is if we could walk them through the yard, but obviously we can't do that. So sticking them in my little trailer eight at a time, I think is uh, a fair, say a fair swap. A little bit disappointed about that hay situation. <laughs> Never mind. But should I put more in there than that? So now that we have moved the cows, let's just take a look at them. Make sure that they're all alright. 
and uh, productivity should go up eventually. Uh, they've got straw bedding. Um, obviously, they've put 11 litres of milk in already and started <laughs> shitting and pissing straight away. Uh, TMR, um, they were already fed that. That's it through the uh, the robot. That's all there. And they've got the uh, hay. And there is a little bit of grass still. Don't know where that's come from. Yes, I did drop a grass bale in there. I think I did. Who knows? Who knows what I'm doing? But anyway, yeah, they are all right. And we've got to wait for that reproduction thing to come up. We were we were up to here on reproduction for the Holsteins. Uh, these are now maturing much further through their puberty. They were still sort of probably about here. So they're getting there. But that is it for another day on Maypole Farms. I'm just deciding where to park the tractor because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be doing next. So I think I might just stick it in this shed here. It'll be fine. Perhaps next time out... We'll uh, look to top up the robot, fill the robot, and sell some silage. Uh, make sure that we're ticking through on that. Um, possibly a contract. We might do uh, one contract and sort the robot and the silage out. That might be our late December schedule. Then we might not come back until spring because it's just going to be a bit of contracting. I might do one or two throughout the winter. Uh, we'll see if I do decide to do them. If I get the time to do that, then uh, obviously I'll take some screenshots so you guys can see where the money come from. But other than that, that is it for today's episode. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Um, a bit of rambling. It might be a little bit longer than I'd intended just because I wanted to catch up on everything that I had to do and to get through to uh, bring this episode along. Um, so yeah, if you've enjoyed it, Please give it a big fat thumbs up down below. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Turn your bell notification on. Find out when new videos are going live. As always, comments and feedback down below. Um, the channel is still growing at an exponential rate uh, from what I am used to. So uh, thank you all for being here. If you've got this far through the video, I'll love you even more. Uh, it really helps with YouTube getting videos out there. If people watch more of it, if they react to it with a like, if they put a comment down there. So yeah, all that good stuff, please. Let's keep this train going. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day, and hopefully I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.